So, uh, DRDO's AAD phase program has been quite successful, but uh, this program is to counter threat coming from say around 2000 kilometer range missile, but we have a threat from our northern adversaries and uh, <coughs> which can fire uh, ICBM or IRBM uh, weapon. So, do we have any any program in place to counter such a threat uh, like ICBM, IRBM or do you uh, also have any program like uh, AAD phase 2 and if it is there then where are you going to test it? See our ballistic missile defense program consists of two phases. Sir. Phase 1 we are developing capabilities to intercept missiles up to the range of 2000 kilometers. In phase 2, we will be intercepting missiles beyond that. Beyond what range? Beyond 2000 kilometers, 5000 plus okay. and so on. So, that our immediate area, we are taking yeah. adequate protections. Now, that development requires that you should be able to detect at a longer distance, you should be able to intercept at a larger distance and your missiles should be highly agile. That work is going on, so we expect that within a year or so, we should be able to test uh, that class Within of a systems. year or so, the phase 2 of AAD can be tested. Yes, but there are a little few problems. So, Today, unfortunately, India has got only one missile range. Yeah. So, in that missile range, we can fire only one type of missile, because today if you see all the missiles are tested between Balasur and or Wheeler Island. Wheeler Island yes. so we do not have any other geometry to test it. It is necessary that India should develop some more ranges from which we can test this class of system. Is there any work going on in this direction? So we are identifying certain areas which are can be used which have a separation distances of in more South than 1000 plus 1000 plus kilometers within the Indian territory of okay. course. So, that we can simulate the 5000 kilometers, 3000 kilometer range missiles, because I must have that kind of velocity, I must have that kind of ang inclination angles, yes. the paths to be able to really test. So, we are working on mm -hmm. Uh, development of alternate ranges and then go with the. So, that means, uh, the phase 2 can be tested only after a new range is identified and developed or can it be tested from the existing range also? From the existing range alone it cannot be tested. Okay. Okay. We must have an alternate range, alternate range can be on ground or it can be a floating range, but ideally you speaking you should have both. That is the type of capability which needs to be created as a national initiative mm -hmm. to make it happen first. And, and single missile range is otherwise also very vulnerable, because if uh, your missile range is at one particular place, in case of any uh, war or something, it can be a, a target, easy target. Right. So, are you also looking from that point of view also? That is also one of the criteria that we must have alternatives, we must have options and India is a huge country relatively speaking, not as big as China, not as US, but today if you see major countries have multiple ranges. Yes. Sir. Many of these have US, China, they have got seven ranges and so on. India is the only country having only one range mm -hmm. of this class. Of this class. We have very small ranges like Pokhran and all, mm -hmm. but they are for much smaller weapons. Okay. not of this class. Mm -hmm. We need to have some more ranges and we are working on it. I think the requirement and necessity has been acknowledged and the work is going on to identify suitable places and how to develop them. So, some, some uh, critics have raised questions over the effectiveness of AAD phase 1 and often they compare it with the uh, PAC 3 or THAAD systems. So, what is your comment on that? The comparisons are always slanted. Hmm. Right. So, let us not look at comparisons. 
But if you see purely the success record of the world, we have had six tests so far yes. and all six have fully met their objectives and intercepted. In the last case, we had simulated scenarios of multiple missiles coming also. Once we get the new ranges, I will be able to simulate the missiles coming from two totally different directions also. So, I think the program has matured well and is capable of doing its job intercepting the mm -hmm. missiles very well. When you compare two systems, there will always be strengths, there will always be relative these things, but I do not think we are. In fact, I am very confident that our system fully meets and is comparable with the best in the world and in some matters it is far better than PAC. Hmm. Great. And sir, uh, no uh, space fearing country except India has shown antipathy towards the military use of space and unfortunately, we till today we do not even have a aerospace command and the threat and importance uh, of the space is growing day by day. So, do you think there is a need for an aerospace command which can consist of all the play uh, uh, stakeholders including DRDO? First of all, militarization of military use of space has been going on for a long time yes. by all nations. It is in terms of the gathering intelligence, gathering imagery for the military use that has been a standing people tracking the ballistic missile launches from space, those capabilities have been developed. So, military use of space has been available for all countries and is being extensively but not used. India, because India has always shied away. Uh, I do not think no. there is any dedicated uh, satellite for military use except I think the Rus uh, Israeli no. made. Why we should have dedicated satellites. If you have a multi use satellite, that is a better option, that is not issue. Issue is are we getting the required inputs from the what we need. Okay. Okay. And I am sure we are getting what, what we, we need. need. Okay. okay. As far as the aerospace command is concerned, you are right. I think the country needs now with the expanding scope of space security issues, with the expanding need and if you see the world over the space and the civil space and the defense space are two independent segments whether it is US, Russia or anywhere. So, I think it is a opportune time to think of a national aerospace command which should integrate many of these initiatives and bring them to fore. And should it be with the armed forces itself or all the stakeholders should have some uh, participation in it. See, as far as the command is, all stakeholders will have to play a role. That yeah. I do not think any doubt should be there in anybody's mind. Finally, who controls it? That is more that of is a policy the, decision and we will leave it to the policy makers. Okay. So, this uh, NAG missile uh, test have been going on for quite some time and the user has not been able to accept it fully and uh, it is air version that is Helena is also I think under trial. So, when are the these two systems will be ready for induction and what are the issues that uh, it is getting so late? See, NAG is one program where we started when we were not mature so. in some of the critical technologies. It has gone through a turbulent phase because when we initiated the missile, we did not have any phased array seeker. We thought so. we will be able to develop, but for some reasons it could not be done. By the time we could get some seekers from some place, it was already a lot of time had elapsed and now evaluation of those seekers, we have a unique environment in yeah. our desert. Yes, sir. Okay the kind of temperature variations, the kind of humidities in that occur in our deserts. Normally, deserts are very dry. Our deserts are not that dry. Hmm. 
but the temperature still vary quite a lot. So, those seekers we found are not adequate, we need to have higher resolution. Now, we have that came out only when we started testing. We had initially very good test, in mm -hmm. fact, about 10 missiles at put, put dot on hit on the tanks, front attacks, top attack, all the modes which are possible. But then we found that certain periods of the day it is not very effective. Now we are working on along with our use, use services also, we are working with better seekers, we are hoping we are going to try it out in this summer mm -hmm. and if that is successful, we will have the next year we will have the full fledged trials of the missiles with the I modified think there, there seekers. There was some issue with the launcher also, the size of the launcher. Size of the launcher is not really an issue because we have now made the launcher which meets the, all the amphibian requirements. And that is Namika. Namika. There were some issues during the trials, but these are anyway trial issues. Mm -hmm. So, they will be rectified, they are got rectified and they will go for the tests so, again. So, uh, can we expect that the Nag missiles and Helena will be ready for induction, say, in a couple of years time or it may be. Ah, we are expecting by 2014 Nag missile should be ready for okay. offering it for reduction. Our confidence is when it comes it will be one of the most effective okay. anti tank missiles with its class of weight but the, range. But the user all. cannot wait that long, they may have to go for acquisition from abroad. See user has got its own plans to acquire, acquire. there is nothing. But Today, so far, it has not been able to acquire. We have not, DRDO development has not been the, in the issue and yeah. uh, okay. impediment and user getting the best of the weapons in any case uh, from anywhere. So, you are sure that this uh, NAG missile program will be a success? I am very confident. I am okay. very confident yeah. that we will be able to overcome the issues in NAG as it is, and then we are also working on the higher version of NAG for future mm -hmm. with much lower weight and should okay. be able to be launched from different much lighter platforms so what is the including time frame? man pads that should be if the project gets sanctioned it should come within about 2 years from that time. 2 years. Thank you sir, thank you very much and wish you all the best for your future. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you.